Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and you probably all recognise this box by now. I know, I know I should be doing other things but I can't help it. This is like a drug, I can't get enough of them. I wake up in the morning and the first thing I think of is Xbox One controllers. So this is it, part four. I've already done part one, two and three. And although I should be doing other things on my channel to make it more interesting, I can't help it, I keep coming back to here. So I promise you I have not taken these controllers out. I don't know what I'm going to be pulling out next. Let's go, let's go to the very bottom and see what we have. All right. Okay, so we have another original Xbox One controller. Again, it says void on here, so that says to me that this has been sold as second hand already. USB port is there, which is good. This one says no. Haven't got a clue. Don't know what that says. No. Boff, boff lens. Don't know. Would it be buttons? No buttons work. No buttons work. Is that what that says? No buttons work, possibly. But you know what? If you watch my part three, you know that this thing here is completely irrelevant. This is probably what was wrong with the original the original fault, but on everyone so far, it's been a Frankenstein controller. It's been put together from different boards and stuff from other controllers. So on the first three, this has two boards in. On, on the first three, both boards were faulty on all three of them. So I'm in no doubt that in this one, it's gonna have two faulty boards as well. But you know what? I don't care anymore. I am loving, that's right, loving doing these. And I'm so glad I got them. Even though I have been conned on them, I'm loving it. I don't care. And I wouldn't change it for the world. So, so far this is my possibly favourite series. So I'm hoping part four is going to be good as well. Slightly disappointed that it's another original Xbox One controller. I thought, I was hoping that maybe it might be the uh, Bluetooth one. You know, the, the, the Mark, the, uh, the second version. Uh, with the 3.5mm jack because I really enjoyed part 3. Part 3 was my favourite by far. Right, so what I'm going to do is get my little laptop, put some batteries in here and see what's going on. See if we can sync it wirelessly, see if it will work with a wire, find out exactly what the problem is. Right, okay, let's uh, pop some batteries in. See if we have any life in it. No. It's powering off again. Okay, I think that's the... I think that's the third time now on these ones where it does that. Right, let's plug it in via USB. No, okay. So... That either means a USB fault is, uh, port is faulty or something a lot more serious. Let's take the batteries out here and turn it on. Yeah. Okay, do you know what? Straight away, my initial feelings are that I'm not very hopeful in this one. Let's plug this in just to see if there's anything wireless. There's not going to be because it doesn't even keep itself on. No, I'm not going to be able to uh, keep it on long enough to even do the sync. Right, so this one is probably going to have major problems, but still we don't we don't know that until we take it apart. So let's take it apart and again see which board is faulty, and we'll probably find that both boards are faulty. But then you know do a bit of swapping around. See, let's see. For me, it will be a bonus even if I can just get one board working out of the two because then I might be able to put it towards controller five or six. Right, okay, let's get this thing apart. Disgusting. Oh, I've got it all up my nails. Right, I'm gonna put my gloves on straight away. Oh, it's real dirty. Look at that. All up here. Just 
check in to see what the buttons feel like. And these ones all feel okay, including the bumpers. This is really dirty, this controller. Really, this is the dirtiest one yet. But you know what? That might be a good thing because maybe this one won't be a Frankenstein controller. This maybe this will be all uh, all original. Right, okay, uh, two thousand and thirteen, so this is gonna be the uh yeah, definitely the original board. Uh right, let's take this apart again. Well it sort of looks looks okay, I think. If you look at these original controllers, can you see that there's, uh, it looks like a little light here, this little white thing, and also there's another one just here as well. And I believe that they are the IR emitters. Can you see here as well? It looks like there's kind of a bit of foil on this cover bit, on this cover bit here. So on these very original controllers, you could just hold them up. I think you could press the sync button and just hold it up to your connect and then the connect would recognize it and sync it so you didn't have to do it via the cable and you didn't have to do it via the sync button on the Xbox One console itself but then on the later ones they got rid of that feature maybe because they were starting to phase out the connect I don't think the connect was as popular as they thought it might be a bit of a shame though because the connect has got it is an amazing piece of kit Right, okay, I mean this one's absolutely filthy, but apart from that, it looks okay, unless it's been sort of damaged, unless there's been kind of uh, coke or something on it. Well, I'm not sure what's happened down here, it looks a bit melted here, doesn't it? That doesn't look, that doesn't look right down here. Hmm, not sure what's happening there. Mind you, there's no damage on the board. Actually, an indication might be what was down here, and that might tell me what was wrong with it. So hold on, there's definitely burning down there. All right, let's have a look. Okay, let's get the magnifying glass on that. Let's zoom. Well, not the magnifying. Let's zoom in on the camera. Okay, so we've got the light at the top here, working our way down to where the burn is. Now look at that. That doesn't look very healthy, does it? doesn't look very healthy at all. Unless the plastic's just burnt onto that, but I would say that this thing heated up and then burnt the plastic. Right, so that might well be our fault. I wonder if this thing has got other faults as well. Well, I think the sensible thing to do is to, again, swap the boards over and see what life we have. It would be nice if I was good enough that I could just fault find without using a working one, but I'm not. And I mean, if I didn't have a working one, straight away I would look to this one here. But really, rather than the video going on for like three to four hours, I need to swap the board so I can find out which one is faulty because I don't want to be fault finding a board which is working. And because there's two boards, it does make it a lot easier to fault find because you can eliminate one of them and that does save a lot of time. So let me get some working boards and we'll see what's happening here. Well, okay, so what I've done is I've swapped over the bad front board for, the, uh, for a good front board, but I'm still using a faulty back. And we have got most things working, so it has synced up now. I can't show you the light. Hopefully you can see it bouncing off my finger there. But this is just via USB, so I've just got plugged into the USB. I'm not trying to wireless at the moment because I haven't got the back on it. Now, uh, good news is, yes, it's synced up, and most buttons are working. Like you can see the analog sticks and stuff. But the weird thing is, I can't get the triggers to work. So when I do this with the triggers, there's, there's nothing happening at all. But at least it is syncing up. Now, that's why I'm thinking that maybe the backboard is faulty because the triggers are not working. And also, I haven't tried at the moment to see whether or not the, whether or not it's going to sync up wirelessly or not. But straight away, we definitely know there's a problem with the front board because it is now syncing up with this other front board. So let's fault find that to begin with, 
And then if we can get the front board working, we can then start worrying about why the triggers and stuff are not working. Maybe it's a fault with the actual triggers themselves, or more than likely it could be a fault with the backboard. But I think first things first, let's at least try to get the front board working because this is not syncing up at all while this one is. So let's start with that. Okay, so we've got three boards here. We've got the 41, which is burnt. We've got a good working one, and then we have a spares board. Now, if you remember, this is where I took the capacitor off on number two, wasn't it? Can't remember now. I think it was at uh, part two. So let's do a little bit of working with our meter just to see what's, what's happening around this burnt chip here. So I'm just going to put my meter to continuity. I'm just going to get a ground at the top here and I'm just going to go across to capacitors to begin with. Right now I'm going to go across this actual thing here. See, you know, did this go faulty because something else caused it to go faulty? Or did the component fail, which is now knocking the board out? And it obviously doesn't look uh, it doesn't look right. It should look like this one here, and it doesn't. It looks completely different. There you go. You can see it's all burnt and stuff. Right. Well, do you know what? It doesn't look right. It's definitely burnt. Let's swap it over, and then we'll see. We we'll see if that cures the the sinking problem or not. Okay, so let's add some flux to this and let's remove this old one to begin with. Got my temperature set to 400 degrees C and I'm going to go for 2 out of 8 because I don't want to knock off those other capacitors and resistors that are nearby. Let me zoom right in for this. Right, here it goes. Turn my fan on. Just going to angle it more away because I'm starting to burn this bit here. See that I've knocked that little capacitor there above it. Yeah, that's back in place now. I'm gonna use some more flux, this is not happening. Right, okay, I'm struggling here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off this uh, D-pad thing. I mean, it doesn't matter if I do break it because I have got more. But I'm going to peel it off. And then at least it might still be able to be reused. Right now I don't have to worry so much about burning it. It's not wanting to be removed at all, is it? Everything's just turning into a big black burning mess. Right, let's up the airflow. Gone on to four out of eight. Let's put some more flux on here.
Now it's starting to happen. Oh, I think some traces might have come up with it. Oh, what a mess. Come on, come off. Alright, I think this board might be ruined. There's definitely a huge trace that's come up there. There you go. What a mess. Uh, right, okay, let's clean that with IPA and then see exactly what's happening. Maybe, be oh yeah, look at that. There's a huge trace come up there. Huge trace. Do you know what? If I did that again, I don't really know what I would do differently. Maybe I should have cleaned it. Maybe I should have cleaned it with IPA first to get, try to get rid of a bit of the corrosion. I don't know, or, or maybe it's common if a component's burnt, but that's what happens, I don't know. Let's give it a good clean and see what damage has done. Looks worse than it is because of just all the burnt flux. Well, I've got to be a bit careful. I think there's capacitors and everything and resistors down here. Yeah, look, I've lost. What have I lost there? I've lost the resistors, haven't I? I need to double check. I think I've lost quite a bit now. Right, okay, that is a complete and utter mess, and I would say it's probably going to be unrepairable. Also, I've lost the resistors down the bottom. There was one sticking up before, maybe it's gone into my brush when I was cleaning it. But look, the pads have gone. Everything's just completely burnt. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get the fiberglass brush. So that's, that's attached to that one there, isn't it? Because I, I can't even see where things are going at the moment. But I don't know where these ones go, so that must go to maybe this one. Don't know about this one, that's missing. Everything's real bad, look at it compared to this one here. That's what it should be like. So I can see that that leg there goes to this resistor. That leg goes up to this resistor. This leg goes to this resistor, down to this one. Don't know what it does then. This one goes to here. Not sure. Hmm. Okay. Now, I don't know how much of that damage was done by me trying to get it off, and I don't know how much would have been burnt into the board beforehand. I mean, this is the one that I took off. Oh, I think I found one of the resistors here. Okay, I have to keep that safe. I'd like to know where the other one went. Do you know what it is? It's probably, that's probably it, hold on. I wonder would this be it bent up at the... Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, let me get the fiberglass pen and see if I can clean this up a bit. Clearer now what's going on. So let me try to compare to this and then hopefully I'll be able to work out what I need to do. It will make more sense once I remove it from the donor board rather than struggling with this. I might as well just remove it and hopefully when I remove it from the donor board it will come off nice. Right, so I'm going to keep this in the correct orientation so I know which way to put it back on. Now, there we go, that's what it should look like. So let me just clean this. 
Okay, so now we can see that that pad isn't going anywhere, is it? So let me get my multimeter on continuity. So I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about that last pin. So I'm just going to go across the others now. So obviously this one here is going to here. Fine. This one is going to in here. So what I can do is I can just scrape, you know, scrape onto those wires that I've already done. This one here is just a ground. Let me just double check that with uh, another ground. Yeah. This one here is, is this also a ground? No. So this one here is going to the capacitors. Does that capacitor go into that one? Yeah. That's the ground, so that's going to there. That's fine. This one is going to here. Yeah, this one goes to here, which also goes to there. Let me just double check where that goes to. So that does go down to here and also the capacitors. So that's fine, that can be jumped across. And this one goes up to where, well, we don't need to worry because we've got that one, but that one goes up to these resistors here. This one here. Fine. Okay. Uh, there was a chance we might be able to. We might be able to do it. So what I'm going to do to begin with? Let's have a look now. What would be the best thing to start with? Would it be to try to solder it in place? I suppose it would be. Then I might be able to just do little jumpers and stuff. It was done as well. Oh, so annoying. Right, what have I taken off there? Oh, it was done as well. That was just me being silly. I should have just left it as it was. Let me get some more tweezers. All stuck to the soldering iron, you see. I could have just left that. That would have worked. Now see whether these two are shorting. No, they're not. These two shorting. No. So that goes to there. Good. This goes to here. This one goes to here and nowhere else. Good. And it also goes to that one there. So that's fine. So that goes to there, goes on to here, and then this one goes to here, and this one goes up to here. And nowhere else. Right, that is good. 
that is actually all connected amazingly. Now I'm just going to go to ohm, see if I can get any reading off these resistors. Right, that says 33 kilo ohms and 34 kilo ohms and climbing. Right, I think that is done. So uh, let's pop it in the board, see if it's going to work, and then I can put some UV mask on that to seal it up. see if it does anything. Here we go. Yay, look at it. Look at that. Let's see if the sync button works. Yay! Woohoo! Alright, let's get the little laptop on the go. Here it goes, let's plug in. Let's make a little bit of room. Let's plug in this. Let's see if we can sync it up. So turn it on, hold down the sync button, and hold down the sync button here. Yes, it's synced up, excellent. Right, and it's recognized it there, brilliant. So now let's see what does and doesn't work. So we're gonna go to uh, start testing this one, okay. Oh, D-pad's not doing anything because I haven't got that little thing connected in there. Do you remember that sticker? Right, analog sticks appear to be working initially. That one appears to be working. Hold on. Yes, triggers are working. Wow, could this be just a single board fault? Surely, surely not. Oh my word, well, they do appear to be working. Let's try the bumper buttons. Yeah. No way. In a way I'm disappointed, the sellers let me down. I thought every single one would have two board faults, but this is working wirelessly. And look. Everything's working, I haven't tried the D-pad yet. Right, okay, let's just try the Xbox button. Yeah. Okay, let's try to see if it will sync up via the cable. I'll just turn this off. But look, it's not syncing up via the cable. Let's power this back up. That's unusual for it to work wirelessly but not via the cable. Strange. It's not recognising it. Ooh, now what could that be? Hmm. Uh, oh, I don't know what to do now on this. I mean, the good thing is it syncs up wirelessly, but why is it not doing it via the cable? I'll tell you what I'm going to do to begin with, just in case I'm lucky. It could just be a dirty contact there. So let me get some IPA and let me just clean up the USB port just in case it's full of flux. And then really I need to swap the boards around again to make sure that the uh, that is all on the front board here, just in case there's something on the back board that's causing it. No, it's not doing that little vibrate thing. Well, let me just double check it's not my controller. I mean, not my USB cable. All right, so let's just try this one here. This is the blue light one. Yeah, that vibrated there. Yeah, and as you can see, that's connecting up. So we've definitely got a problem with the USB side of it, haven't we? 
which is a shame. Okay, well, look, you know, I didn't expect it to be that simple. So what I'm gonna do now is swap the boards around again and find out why the USB is not working. Hopefully it's gonna be on the front board again. Change the front board over. Yeah, so it's a fault on the front board, which is good. I'm pleased about that because it's easier to fault find on the front board. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to take it apart again and now see what the difference is between the working front board and this one here. I'm gonna compare both of them and find out what's wrong. I suppose first things first, let's see if it's an issue with the USB port itself. So I should be able to check that by getting my meter, going onto continuity, and then going between the pins on the connector and the pins on the board. That's the ground. Well, they appear to be okay. Go across the capacitors now, see if I can find anything. The capacitors look okay, so I'm just going to give it a visual inspection now. Okay, what I did is I pulled out another board because believe it or not, there was quite a few differences between this board and this board here. So if you have a look now, this one here, so they look the same that way, but I was looking. Where am I now? Hold on, that was it. I was looking here and I thought, brilliant, because look, there's a capacitor here. Can you see there's C37? That one there. And I thought to myself, excellent, it's not here. Because if you have a look, C37 is missing from here. And I thought, well, that's definitely going to be the problem. But I thought, I'm just going to double check with another board. Now, I found this board here, again, in the box of spares. I'm kind of getting mixed up now between what's in the box of spares and what's from the previous videos. But uh, they're different colours, but they're exactly the same as far as the components are concerned. And on this one here, I've plugged it in to the back board here. And this one definitely syncs via the USB cable. And if you have a look, there is no C, uh, C37 there either. So obviously that's not relevant. Now, I've gone across everything and the only one thing that I can see that's different, obviously I was co concentrating more around the burn area, is on the other side of this burn area here, you know, where I've done all my uh, little patching up. Can you see this big thing here? I don't even know what this is called. So if you know, it says R91 on it. If you know what that's called, let me know. I definitely know that there's resistance between all four corners. So it's testing the same as this board here, but if you look, it's slightly lifted. It's not properly on its pads. So it's kind of moved over by about a millimeter or maybe two millimeters. It's kind of slid over this way. So I could try heating that up and pushing it back. Uh, but then again, it is, you know, it is still connected. In fact, looking at it now, it just looks like there's a pad at the top and a pad at the bottom. So although there's four corners to this, it looks like it's just one long pad there and one long pad there. So it's not going to be that. I can't actually find what's wrong with this, but there's no way I'm going to give up because there's not that much on here. So what I'm going to do is, and sorry, especially as it does sync up wirelessly as well. So I don't think there's going to be anything too major. It's like it's completely dead when you plug the power into it. So what I'm going to do is rather than constantly turning my computer on and off and worrying about that I might blow the USB on it, I'm just going to use a power bank and I'm going to plug the USB cable from the power bank into here so it's going to push 5 volts into here and I'm just going to follow the voltage around the place and hopefully I'll find it going through maybe a capacitor here where it doesn't go through one here. Then I know that maybe that component's faulty. I don't really know what else to do. But I really want to really want to fix this one, especially after doing all that work there. I still have to cover that with UV mask, but there's no point in me doing that if the board is still faulty. So uh, that's what I'm going to be working on. Now, I'm not going to film it until I, I find out what the problem is, because this could go on for hours. 
actually I'm just going to talk you through as I go along in case I forget something. So basically I've, uh, this is a good board here, I've tested it on certain pins and it's showing up as a certain amount of voltage. So basically I've gone across the pins here, so I've got this set to DC volts and I've gone across the pins here. So the first pin there's nothing, sorry, the first kind of thing is ground so that's not going to have anything. The first pin you've got 5 odd volts, there you go 5.1, second one you've got 2.7 Next one you've got 2.7 and then one after that you've got 1 point something. Okay, so then I've traced it down to the two resistors, the 2.7 ones, that's what I'm working on now. 2.7 goes through the resistors on both of them, 2.7, 2.7, goes down here onto here and I've done it on the good board and this board and you can see 2.7 there and 2.7 there. So these all look good. So that those two pins have to be okay because they're testing the same on both. Now I'm gonna do the same on the 1.4 and the five and then hopefully I might be able to find out where this problem is. And this is the power bank here. You can see it's just plugged in via the top here. Right, okay, I've followed the 1.4 pin around and it ends up on this connector here. Second, that one there, 1.4 and this goes all over the place so basically it goes from it goes from here to here then it goes through the board travels along a bit then goes through the board again travels along a bit goes through the board again travels along a bit comes out down the bottom here and goes across to here so that appears to be working so now that looks like the two 2.7s and the 1.4 are working so now all I can do is the uh, 5 volt unless there's a problem with the ground somewhere I'm really not getting anywhere here. When I plug it in, I'm measuring five volts and the five volts is going down and coming up on the pin down here. Now, there is an online website called Acid Mods that I've been told about by a couple of people on the comments and also David, who likes to help me out on uh, via emails. He's the one that gave me this multimeter and various other tools as well, you know, the little USB tester. Uh, so I could look at acid mods possibly, that give me, might give me more info. The problem I've got is when testing for voltage is the fact that when you turn it on the voltages change. Do you see what I mean? And I can't turn it on on this one. So that's the bit that's confusing me. But when I follow the voltage when this is plugged in it's all coming up the same. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my meter to ohms and I'm going to go across the different resistors and see if they're reading the same or not. I thought I'd be able to fix this but now I'm not so sure. Okay, so I've been going across the different resistors, not really coming up with much, but I've been concentrating mainly on the damage down here because that's where the little fire was. Now, this is interesting. When I go across this component here, it says D23. You see this one? Now, I don't know whether it, I don't know if it's a diode or not for D. There's no kind of diode symbol, but maybe it's a diode. Now, if I go across, for example, this one here on the good board, well, I don't know if it is a good board, but it's a board that's very similar. It will come up, if I go that way round, it will come up as 41 kilo ohms. And if I go this way round, it is jumping all over the place. Yeah? Okay, so it's not really making any sense. This one will also give a similar reading. So this way round, it is jumping all over the place. And yet this way round, with the red on top, it's reading... 44 kilo ohms. So that's 44 kilo ohms, and this one was. There you go, 41 kilo ohms, so very similar. But look at this now, with the red lead on the top, I'm not getting any reading. Can you see it's just jumping around all over the place? Yeah? And now if I go the other way around, it's also jumping around all over the place. Actually, it's not giving me anything there. There we go, it's all over the place now. So I'm gonna change this one out, this D23, to see if there's anything wrong with it. Now I'm really worried about ruining all the hard work that I've done here. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this yet, whether I'm gonna do it with a soldering iron, or whether I'm gonna use hot air and try to tape off this bit here. I think that's what I might try to do. I think I might try to angle it this way, so the flux drips down this way, and uh, tape it off with a captain tape and use hot air to take it off. Actually, thinking about it, I bought myself some soldering tweezers that I haven't used yet, and this might be the ideal opportunity to use them because I'm really worried about putting hot air anywhere near this work that I've done down here. So, let's get the soldering tweezers out and let's see if it makes any difference. 
Alright, so here they are. They were only very cheap ones off eBay. I've had them for a couple of weeks, but I haven't bothered even trying to use it yet because I just don't think... God, look at all that burning coming off them. Better get the fan on that. Uh, I don't know how good they're going to be. They look a bit big and bulky, if I'm honest with you. I didn't think... I thought they would be kind of more... I thought they would have a, a finer point on them. But I suppose, like anything, you get what you pay for. That must be just burning off the stuff from the manufacturer. But even when I go that, can you see they don't really go... I really have to squeeze them hard to get them to join together. But that's not a problem, because what I can do is I can just bend those myself. But straight out of the packet, they don't look ideal. Put a bit of flux on there, and I'm just going to see how they see if they work. They might work well, they might not. I really don't know. As well as that, the uh, iron bit of them are massive, so there's not much handle compared to that, so it's they're kind of hard to use. Excellent, right, I managed to pull it off. Well, they sort of did the job, didn't they? They got rid of that. Let me rest them down for a minute. I'm going to try to add a little bit of leaded soles to that. I'm going to take it off the donor board now. I'll zoom in and show you in a minute. I'll be honest, I did not find that easy at all. Just before I zoom in, let's just see if it's uh, reading differently now on the meter or not. Might be nothing at all to do with that. Right, so I think when the black was on top, it was going everywhere, which it still is. And now when we were this way round, it was also going everywhere, and now it's not. Excellent. Right, okay, well that's definitely different than it was before. Let me zoom in. I didn't find it easy, but you know what? If I didn't have those soldering tweezers, I think I would have ended up ruining all this down there. So the reason I don't like these is because they're very hard to press together, look at the gap, and also they're too big. But that's not a problem because I can grind that down and I can also bend these more in. So when I do this, they touch together because look, you have to do that then use a lot of strength. And when you're using a lot of strength like that, you end up but it's hard, isn't it? You know, you want things to be easy. You don't want to be having to use all your forearm strength to be able to do that uh, because then you're going to get the shakes and stuff like that. So I think I can adapt these. From memory, I think they were like 12 pounds, so I'm not going to expect them to be amazing. But if I can just do a few jobs like that, then they've already paid for themselves because otherwise I would have had a nightmare with this down here. Right, so there it is down there, and also I've got it the right way around as well, because you can see there's a marking on the top there, it says O2, and that's the same as this one. So if you compare that now to this one here, O2 that way, so the O is down by my thumb, and this is my thumb, and the O is down by my thumb. 
Okay, so let's pop it back in and see what's happening, and then I can cover all this Arian solder mask if uh, if it's working. I'm not sure. I'm not overly confident. I don't. I really don't know. In fact, I don't even need to put it into my computer. I can just do it via this thing here. See if it lights up. So let's now turn it on. See if it does anything. No, still not turning. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it's turning on, and it wasn't turning on before. Brilliant. Oh, fantastic. So it was that diode or whatever that thing was, this thing here. Excellent. Okay, I suppose it makes sense because it was down by the heated area. Right, so let's connect this up now to my little laptop and see if the D-pad works because the D-pad wasn't working properly on this before. So let's put the sticky bit back on. Right, here we go. Let's see if it connects it up. So there's no batteries in it at the moment. Yeah, there we go. Weird thing is I didn't feel it vibrate. I didn't feel it vibrate. Normally it does a little thing. Anyway, look, it's here. So new interface, start testing, and now it's working via USB. And the D-pad is working. Wow, okay, that uh, appears to be working. Let me just try to vibrate on it. That's interesting. Buzz doesn't appear to be working. Uh, let's try it on the wireless. Well, that's weird. Look, so the vibration works when it's wireless, but not wired. How strange is that? Weird. That's really weird. No, and that's why when it got plugged in, it didn't do that funny vibrate. Oh, now. If I'm honest with you, I'm not going to know how to fault find that. So obviously it's taking its power from two different ways. One, uh, when it's when the USB is plugged in, it obviously bypasses the battery. Of course it's going to bypass the battery, isn't it? Otherwise it would end up trying to charge the batteries, uh, which would damage them on normal alkaline batteries. All right, let me just try to get my head around this for a minute, and if I can think of a way, then I will think of it. If not, I'm not overly bothered, because I think most people would always be using it as a wireless controller anyway. It's just that it would be kind of nice to know why it's not doing that. Okay, let me have a think. Right, what I'm doing is I'm just updating it on the actual Xbox. So it does sync up wirelessly to the Xbox, but because it's an old controller, I have to use a USB cable to update it, and I'm going to see if that makes any difference. There we go. So the newer controllers do all this wirelessly, but with the older controllers, you have to connect up a USB cable. Okay, it says the controller was updated. Now I'm going to see if it works with the vibration while connected to the Xbox on the USB cable. Yeah, still not working. Look. Buzz. And when it's on that, it's not working. Now let me show you when it's wireless. And look, now when it's wireless... Buzzes, how strange is that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that Acid Mods website and I'm going to follow the traces on there to see if I can see where the USB goes from there. It might be easier. Okay, not such a good idea to bend the terminals of the battery back because now it's come off. So I'm going to have to take the one off the donor board. I don't need to film this, it's just a case of using the solder sucker to take off these three here, putting it back on here and soldering it in, so it's not a big deal. Okay, that's it back on there, and this is the old one taken off here, so nice and easy. Now let me show you that website, I'm going to have to sort of try to get my head around it all, but if you have a look, this is the, the name of it up top, can you see there? Acidmods.com, and it looks like they have the kind of uh, 
information for all the controllers which is really good so it shows you the different lines there and I believe it shows you the different voltage on the different lines so then if we go down here it says what each of the test points are the problem is it's kind of hard for me to get my head round but hopefully if I keep looking at it it might make sense but before I go through this massively these are all the test points here I believe Hold on. here we go uh, connector pinouts connector pinouts and the test points all down here so amazing website so uh, what I'm going to do is before I get my head around that I am just going to keep looking at these boards because I seem to have quite a lot of success when I just keep going across them and trying to work out the differences between them because there must be a reason why it's not allowing the rumble when it's in the wired mode there must be some sort of little switch somewhere which is not allowing the 5 volts through that way to power the uh, motor so that's what I'm going to check out Okay, I'm going to have to give up on this rumble because I can't find what's wrong with it. And the thing is, it doesn't really matter because there's a wireless controller where it's going to be used wireless all the time until your batteries go flat. It works with the rumble. It's only when it's fired a USB. Now, the thing is, it's definitely a problem with this board because when I tried this board with the same backboard here, the good board here, then the rumble also works via USB. But whenever I put this board in, it doesn't work. So obviously there is a component on here that has failed, but I cannot find it at all. I looked at the Acid Mods uh, website. I traced the wires around. Apparently pin one, this one here, is the one for the rumble motor positive. And I've been going from here because I'm thinking, well, the rumble motor is not working. And uh, I traced it across here. It goes through the wires. It keeps going back through, back through. And then it comes up to, I think it's... Uh, I think yeah, it comes up on this this one here, through this resistor, through here, goes up via this capacitor up that way, and then uh, the other side goes down here through this diode, and then works its way around and ends up going on to I think it's I think it's this pin here, and I think on another route it goes on to this pin here, and I've traced every single component on that route, and I've measured it for ohms and stuff, and they're all. They're the same on both of them. They're the same. So I really don't know. Unless, for example, I'm measuring ohms with the diode, maybe I should be doing diode tests. I don't know enough about it just yet. I will do eventually, hopefully within the next year or so. But right now, it's still a lot of this is still a mystery to me. So I'm really pleased with what I've done, but it's a shame I couldn't get it working 100%. But I'm willing to give that little part a miss because I don't really think it's going to affect the use of the controller. And if the, in the comments somebody knows what's wrong with it, then I can always revisit this one either on a separate video or I can add it on to, for example, the, uh, the fifth and sixth video because this is the fourth one I've done now. So remember, I've got another two to do after this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put UV mask on here and then put the UV light on to cover all this up. And I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to give the controller a good clean and then that will be it. I'll put it onto the little laptop, just make sure every single thing is working on it, and then I'll show you it working on the Xbox. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm really pleased with how it's gone. I'm just a little bit disappointed that I couldn't find that final thing because I have been on that little bit now for over an hour, and when you invest time in something, you kind of want to see what it is. But uh, I can't see it. I'm confident it's not the USB port. I've gone across that. I've even done an ohms test between here and the components, and they're all testing the same. So it's, I don't think it's like a high resistance fault or anything there. I really do not know what it is. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's get this sorted here. Right, okay, so that's set now. So that will hopefully give it some protection there, yeah? Right, let's get this back in the controller and give everything a really good clean.
Right, let's sync this up. Remember, it was synced to the Xbox last, so it's not going to be synced to this. There we go. Yeah, there we go, that's synced up here. New interface, start testing. Right, let's see if I can make this big. Excellent. Okay, so triggers. Small amounts going up full. Yep. Yeah. Small amounts up full. Click in, click in, up, down. And just go through everything. Yeah, that's all working. And the analog sticks. Yeah, they're all going to 100% small amounts. And all the way around. That's fine. Small amounts. That's perfect. And lastly, the Xbox button. Yeah, perfect. Right, let me just check the rumble. Yeah, I can feel it in the triggers. Yeah, that's fine. So that is all working. And hasn't it come up lovely and clean? Now let's just quickly double check to make sure the USB is working. Not the rumble part of it, but everything else. Yeah, there we go. That's synced up there. And... Yeah, buzz is not working. Let's go to the new one. Start testing. Yeah, and again, that's all. That's all working perfectly. Right, let's connect this up to the Xbox. So turn it on, hit the sync, and hit the sync. There we go. Excellent. And very last thing, just do the wired. Yep, there we go. Fantastic. So again, what a lovely, lovely fix. So what did we have to do there? We had to sort out that burnt little chip down the bottom and then we had to change over the diode that was above it. But what I like to do is, I like the way that uh, the fault finding to find these things because it's kind of like a mystery that you have to solve. So I really like it. Just looking now, look how warm that analog stick is. Wow, that really is worn. If I'd seen that earlier on, I would have swapped that over to another one. But it's fine, it works, so I'm going to leave it at that. Remember, these controllers now are getting on a bit. 2013, or the, well, you know, probably more likely 2014, but still, that's uh, going to be coming up to four and a half to five years. Right, so uh, that is it. I've still got the controller five and controller six to do, and this was the first one that wasn't a Frankenstein controller. I believe that this was all connected up like. Uh, you know, I, I believe that this was all the original controller because everything looked to have the same amount of dirt on it. And for the very first time now, the backboard wasn't faulty. So that's that was good. So maybe now on item five and six, they might be easier or possibly they might not have faults on both the boards. So that's kind of interesting. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please look out for the Xbox controller 5 and 6. I also have a box of PlayStation 4 controllers, and I've had them for about three quarters of a year. I haven't even unpacked them yet, so it'll be interesting to see what sort of state they're in. I don't think I've ever taken apart a PlayStation 4 controller, so that should be quite interesting from my point of view. I'll uh, hopefully learn a few things. So if you do know why the rumble's not working via the USB, please add it to the comments below, and then I can always take another look at this at a later stage. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye now.